TOC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from the company XGME. And this is the XGME Horizon Ultra. It is a 4K long throw smart home projector with Dolby Vision. It's actually touted as one of the first of its kind with Dolby Vision and a few other features here. And it's actually a long list of features. But it is XGME's latest and greatest flagship projector. It is heavy, definitely very heavy, uh, just so much as it is uh, heavy in specs, because this comes with a lot. But for one, I mean, it's Dolby Vision certified, so you have better brightness, better color gamut, you have better color accuracy, and more. I mean, you just have better picture. <laughs> and better colors, better everything, thanks to Dolby Vision certification and or, well, support for Dolby Vision. So if you have any movies that support Dolby Vision, you'll get it out of this projector. It's also a long throw projector, so this kind of changes things up a little bit because a lot of XGME's products are more about kind of a, a short throw or ultra short throw, which kind of specifies limited environments, you know, in terms of those kind of individuals that are looking for something that's closer to the screen or right up to the screen. This is for the rest of the world that wants to have a projector that's a little bit further away and up on the ceiling or on a shelf or something for when you're building more of a home theater kind of feel. I make it sound like most everybody's doing that, but <laughs> a lot of people, you know, it's, it's just the classic way of doing it. That's how people have been used to using projectors for so long. It's more of a toss up between mid throw and long throw more than anything with short throw being more for like presentations in the classroom. It was only until recently in the last so many years that that really became popular as projectors moved away from just those simplistic Pico projectors and into something that actually gave you a great image at that same distance. But in this case, now you can go to the back of your room or closer to the back of your room, shoot it from the ceiling or however your configuration is and get the same effect that you get out of XGME's other projectors with the same specs, the same features. But before we get to that, there is also one difference that you'll find in this model that's well, different from their other models that's a little bit, we'll say, luxurious compared to some of the other ones, you know, which are already very good. But this one offers a dual light system that's a bit of a hybrid system, not a bit, it is. That makes use of LED and laser to be able to produce your image. So that way you have the pros of both that outweigh the cons of the other. So. Laser helps balance LED, LED helps balance laser, giving you a nice big bright image on your screen, hopefully. We'll test that out shortly, when compared to just using one or the other. The result is the brightest projector that XGME has ever created, and that's this, the Horizon Ultra. This one offers a ISO lumen count of 2300, or up to 2300, which is 77% brighter than the previous flagship they had, which was their Horizon Pro. So Horizon Pro, Horizon Ultra, much brighter. But that's thanks to the dual light system, at least that's what XGME says. And again, we'll find that out in just a moment once we actually break this out and put it in one of our demo theaters and give it a try later on, which will be included in this video for you in a much shorter amount of time. But uh, for now, we have many other things to discuss, such as that dual light system and some of the other hardware and software techniques that XGME uses to be able to get a really good image. That's Dolby Vision and just some other features we'll discuss shortly. But this has a DCI P3 color space that is over 95.5% and a Rec. 709 standard that exceeds 99.9%. .9%. And with all of the above, XGME is promising that this is better than your typical tri-laser option, which is gonna just not look as good because sometimes the colors just kind of cause bleeding edges around well, edges of things on the screen. But uh, this supposedly is not gonna do that. It's gonna give you much better color space, much better everything. It's gonna look nice to the eyes. It's gonna give you pr plenty of brightness. There's a lot going for it. And it doesn't just stop there. Now bear with me here. I have a lot more to go over, but we're gonna try to make this as easy as possible. And of course, if you feel like skipping ahead, we'll provide uh, chapters in this video so that you can skip around as needed. But it is important to actually listen to some of these specs because there's things that this projector does that none of their other projectors and most other projectors on the market don't. So for one, you have low latency for gaming. You actually have a gaming mode that brings it down to as low as 18 milliseconds latency, allowing you to be able to game without worrying about latency. 
because uh, typically on projectors, latency is usually a problem, and you don't typically want to game on projectors. But that has been changing a lot over the years thanks to things or just enhancements in technology such as laser projectors and other things that simply respond faster in getting that light to the screen, which then reflects back to your eyes, which normally is what, you know, that time, that delay is what creates your latency when using projectors. In this case, that latency is very low. It's not as low as some of the latest, we'll say, just micro LED, LED, and or OLED screens that are on the walls, but that's also because they only have one direction to send that color to your eyes. You're not having to wait for it to come at the screen from a projector and then to your eyes, so latency. But this one has low latency. It has the ability to project an image of up to 4K at 60 hertz with said low latency, so you are getting a gaming 4K projector with low latency. And you're able to project, like many of their other products, most of their other products, onto a screen that's up to 200 inches. So you have massive potential in terms of the size of screen that you want to have in your environment. So you're really just limited to your environment, how big your wall, your screen, or anything else you're projecting this against. And yes, you can project this against your wall, as long as you don't have a textured wall. So they typically you don't want to project against a textured wall because you're going to see the texture in the image. But if you have flat paint walls, you can project. With that, this has the company's latest ISA 3.0, which is Intelligent Screen Adaption Technology, which is like the best ever. Uh, if you compare it to what's out there, we've played with a lot of projectors over time and XGMe just really has it locked in and, and just dialed it so well that the user doesn't really have to do much to get a good image. And by that, it has things like auto keystone, auto focus, uh, auto, auto object avoidance. And then it also has, uh, the, with the latest uh, in, uh, enhancements that the company has made to this technology, it also has uninterrupted keystone, which means that if you move the projector and it has to re-keystone onto the wall, it's not gonna go back to the, the, the grid scene that they used to in the first generation of this technology. Now, it'll keep the image on the wall and just move it to a nice rectangular view on your wall or your projection screen. So you can bump it around. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Of course, I wouldn't bump this around. This is a little expensive. But if you do accidentally bump this, it will correct itself and it doesn't take you away from the content you're watching. So that is the most well-known features of ISA Tech that comes from XGMe. But what also comes with the new 3.0 generation, well, you have a lot, but you have dynamic adjustment of the brightness and colors, for example. And uh, what that means is it'll actually adjust the colors and the brightness of the display based on the lighting in the room. So as the lighting in the room grows darker or lighter, so does the color and the brightness of the projection. So that way, if you turn on the lights, it's going to increase brightness a little bit. So that way you can still see it very nicely, very well, very nicely, very well. <laughs> and if the lights go down in the room, so does the brightness. So it doesn't blow out your eyes with this overly annoying, exhausting, bright screen in front of you. So it'll just as needed, all thanks to the whole ISA tech that's built into the projector. Of course, it doesn't stop there. It does have eye protection as well. So if you have children running around and you have this sitting on, a, let's just say a table or something else that's shooting at the screen that's not on the ceiling, uh, there's a, even, well, actually, even if it's on the ceiling, there's a, there's a good chance that that child might run in front of the beam or even an adult if they're not paying attention, it happens. But when that does happen, it will detect an object or a person moving in front of the screen and it'll immediately black out the screen with a tiny little nose that just says, hey, you know, we notice there's something moving in front of the screen and because of that, it you know, it's just temporarily halting the image so that way it doesn't, you know, hurt your eyes. And then once you clear the screen, it'll bring you whatever you're watching back onto the display that's being projected. And then it doesn't also stop there. We also have the neat feature which goes back to my short little description of paint on the wall and when you're actually projecting against the wall. This actually has what's called wall color adaption, but what that does is it adjusts to the paint on the wall. So if you have gray walls, you know, if you have tan colored or brown walls, like we have like a light brown or tan here at the studio across three of these walls. But if we were to project to say there's nothing on this wall behind me and we were to project on this wall, the ISA technology would be able to pretty much measure the color that's, or just view, see, <laughs> the color that is uh, the paint that's on the wall that being projected against, and it'll adjust the color and the brightness of the image to be able to compensate for that color. 
So that way blues will still look like blues and yellows will still look like yellows and, blue, and greens, greens, reds, reds, etc. You know, even though the color of the wall isn't white. Now that's cool. Again, all part of ISA 3.0, their intelligent screen adaption technology that's in its latest generation, which is just phenomenal. I told you I have a lot to discuss here, so I apologize um, if you haven't skipped ahead. Uh, but at the same time, if you are watching still, well, you listen to me because, like I said, this is important to know because this really is what sets this product apart from a lot of the other products that are out there in the market. Then we get to the more simpler stuff, or at least the stuff that's more common with XGME products. For example, you have Harman Kardon sound built into it with the speakers built into this. So you, you don't have to have this connected to a receiver or a, a sound bar or anything else. It would be advised still to use something like that because speakers inside of this aren't going to be nearly as loud as a surround sound system. So if you want surround sound to go with that Dolby Vision, then definitely make use of a receiver. If not, let's say you just have it as a, a gaming den or a cartoon den for children or something else, which would be quite the household. Those, those would be lucky children to have something like this. You have the built-in speakers. Or if you need to move this somewhere to another room or outside at the pool area, you have the option of being able to use the speakers built into it. And they come from Harman Kardon, so they're going to sound Good. And then you have Android TV 11 support, which is going to give you support for all of your favorite apps, such as Hulu and Amazon and, and YouTube and even Netflix using some special instructions that we just happen to have right here. They do include a little fold out here. So it is work around. A lot of these projectors for some reason have a limitation when it comes to Netflix. And I, I believe it's a licensing issue between these, uh, between projectors and that company. Netflix just seems to make it very difficult. Whatever the reason it is, XGME has you covered. Uh, you just have to download a desktop environment or a uh, what's called a desktop launcher to be able to install it into, and you'll be able to access all your favorite Netflix content as well. And then you have the design of the projector. This uh, is another feature that XGME is proud of that allows you to better enjoy your projector in your home environment without having to worry about it just looking at it like an ugly projector. Many of the basic entry-level or mid-level projectors aren't exactly appealing to the eyes. That's where this one steps in with a very modern look, featuring things like rounded corners and pleather or PU leather to give it a little bit of a special touch. That way it blends in with your environment as more of a item of decor and not just technology. But then finally you have the price tag. The price tag is $1,699, $1,699, which can be seen as expensive for some, but at the same time, not so much when you consider the average price of a very good or quality 4K projector, which can sometimes be found in upwards to about three to even $5,000 or more, but at that point you're getting a little insane and the average consumer is not gonna be looking for something like that. So if this lives up to those other projectors, which it probably will knowing XGME, $16.99 makes for a pretty good price tag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. We're gonna see what it looks like physically, visually, and uh, we will see what it comes with. And then we're gonna hook this up, like I said, and we're going to show you what it looks like on the screen. So for now, let's go ahead and open it up. And you are immediately presented with the projector itself, which, as I mentioned, looks cool. It looks very cool, very modern. So we're just going to take this and pull it out of the box. And you'll notice it's also pretty decently small in size as well. Now, it's not tiny, but it's not big. A lot of 4K projectors, or at least really good 4K projectors, are or can be very bulky. And by bulky, I mean about about this height or less and about this wide and front to back. I mean, they can be noticeable when you're looking at companies like Sony, JVC, Epson, and some of these others that are known for 4K projection, or at least in Epson's case, faking 4K projection to most of their models, but we won't go there. This is 4K. So comparing this to those, this is smaller in size and has a much nicer look to it. And it's, I mean, it's very oh, it's just modern. And you have, again, a pleather kind of material here that's on the sides and on the top, as well as just a really nice, you got some cloth here going across the front of the projector here. You have a, a little bit of a grill section here with either plastic or aluminum. I'm guessing that's gonna be very thin. Yep, aluminum. On the back side, you have some airflow 
Okay, here, some, or at least a grill for some airflow coming out of the projector, as well as your connectivity running across the bottom here. Then, of course, on the bottom, you're going to have a rubberized seal going across here, which is going to act as a foot, so that way it sits still on whatever surface it's on. Hopefully also guaranteeing that you won't bump it, forcing it into a keystone adjustment. But again, if it does happen, you won't have to worry much about that. And then you have your threads here in case you want this to be on some form of a tripod. You have your Harman Kardon logo here going across the front and you have your XGME logo right here on the top. And that's it. It's just, it's a very, very well designed projector. Uh, it is very durable. Yeah, that's one thing I left out is this nice silver trim that's acting as, or kind of looks like uh, the style of a cage running around that everything comes together with. Uh, so you have multicolor tones, really nice materials, a lot of weight, some really good, uh, at least I'm only guessing, uh, good hardware inside, good build quality, you know, that hopefully will last a very long, long time, especially for the price. But again, that price isn't much of a concern if it competes well with some of these more expensive models that are out there in the market. So further in the box, you just have a little tray that folds out, revealing everything underneath it, such as your instructions and your cables. And of these accessories, you have those instructions, which we'll start with first. You have, thanks for choosing XGME, yeah, just a card to remind you to go register on their website. You have their warranty information. You have some frequently asked questions. Then you have this really thick, scary manual here that isn't really scary because you have multiple languages. So really it is, well, actually, yeah, it's that thick. So there is a lot going for this projector, but it's not really scary. And then looking further into the accessories, you have your power cable here, which is just a D plug running to an Edison cable here that plugs into the wall. And you have your power brick. Now the power brick, uh, we'll just like, it's, it's a brick. It's definitely a big brick here. But this is also taking away some of the, the weight of the projection or the projector itself. Uh, this, is, this, this, this is heavy. This has a lot of weight to it. And it's probably, I'd say, I don't know, a fifth of the weight of the entire projector itself. So it's a good thing that they included this separately and not built into the projector. But uh, obviously the only situation here that you'd have to be concerned about is if you are mounting this on the ceiling. If you are mounting on the ceiling, you gotta figure out what to do with this. So your best bet would probably be in that situation is since you'll have this upside down against the ceiling, is to just kinda of rest this on top somewhere if your ceiling mount will allow for it. If not, you'll just have to brace it against the ceiling behind the projector. But in most cases, you're probably going to have this on a bookshelf, a stand table, or something else, and just there as a piece of really nice decor, at least when it's not in use and as well as a Bluetooth speaker because it can be used as a Bluetooth speaker as well. So you don't have to always use it as a projector. It can serve multiple purposes and look good while it's doing it. Then you have your remote. The aluminum housing is nice. It's definitely, it, it's light, although it has a little bit extra weight to it because of the aluminum, it's not too bad, but it does give that kind of idea that this, this is a very well-made remote. And you have that color tone between silver and black here and some of your typical buttons that you find on a lot of XGME controllers, including your power button here at the top. You have your settings button. You have your Google Assistant button since it is Android TV, so you're gonna have access to Google Assistant. You have your directional pad with an OK button in the center. You have your back button. You have your menu button. You have your home button. You have your plus and minus buttons here, which is gonna be for things like volume. And you have your focused button here so you can manually set the focus using the remote. That's it. It's just a very well-made remote. Looks nice and it should fit into your environment just as neatly as does the projector. As for the ports that are on the back side of the projector, you have everything here on the back. You have your power connection, which is going to be what this cable or the brick plugs into, and then the other half goes to the wall. You have an ethernet jack here so you can connect this to your network and and get a wired internet connection running to it because again, it has Android TV in there. So if you want a more dedicated connection, which if you have it at the, if you have an outlet, let's say it's on the ceiling on the wall or wherever this is close to and being plugged into, if you also have ethernet access to that area coming out of that outlet or just happen to have ethernet access, I would suggest using that because Wi-Fi isn't always as dependable as we would like. So ethernet gives you a little bit more of a reliable connection. 
but you have the option of both because it also has Wi-Fi obviously built into it, so you can go either way. And then you have two USB connections here. This is gonna be for any kind of USB content that you wanna feed in from a thumb drive or an external drive. This is USB 2.0, so you are limited on speed, but it still should be fast enough for most content. Then you have two HDMI inputs here. Now this is gonna be whatever your signal is coming from, let's say a receiver or a video game system, a Blu-ray player, a TV stick if you want to also have, uh, if you just wanna use Fire Stick because you don't want to like the interface that's on here, whatever your excuse may be, you have two HDMI inputs to be able to make use of. And of course, if you are using a sound system like a speaker bar or a receiver, and again, I would highly recommend a receiver with surround sound with a projector as special as this, you would want to put that into HDMI 2 because on this model, HDMI 2 is the one that also supports ARC, which sends audio back to the receiver on the same cable. And that is eARC specifically, which is important to point out, not just ARC, but eARC. But yes, yeah, so that way you're able to bring whatever is connected to your receiver into the projector. And if you're using any of the apps on the projector, sound back to the receiver using whatever input you have assigned for ARC. And then your last three options for connectivity on the back is you have an optical jack right here on the back. And then you have an analog 3.5 millimeter AUX input. And then you have your power button, which isn't connectivity. It's just your power button for turning the projector on. And in most cases, you probably won't be using that projector or that power button on the projector because you have your remote. So it's a lot more convenient to just point and click than to chase down the projector and hit the button. And another little something special is that the company includes batteries. A lot of these projectors uh, from well, a lot of these companies, for some reason, uh, even though the price tag can get a little bit high, they don't include batteries. It's not that hard to include just the most simplistic of generic batteries to it at least give you some kind of life to start off with with these remotes, especially since generic batteries alone can take you a very long way with remotes because remotes don't really require a lot of juice. So they do include batteries, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's it, the XGME Horizon Ultra 4K long throw smart home projector with Android TV 11 loaded inside and their ISA Tech 3.0 that offers so much, including being able to pretty much do everything for you for the most part. Keystone, again, focus, and zoom, uh, uh, well, not zoom, but well, yes, zoom, uh, object avoidance, you know, so if you have it pointing at a screen, it will automatically size itself to that screen accordingly as well as possible and or on the wall, it's gonna avoid things, uh, that's where object avoidance comes into play, it's gonna avoid things like any kind of sconces or other lights or frames or anything else that might be hanging on the wall, speakers or anything else. It's gonna find whatever space you have in between all that stuff and try to project within that space to give you as much of an image as possible given the space that it has to work with. And again, if you're using a screen, it is helpful to have uh, just something to throw out there. It's helpful to have a, a screen that contains a black border because it's easier for it to differentiate where the, the edges are and it'll do a better job of being able to give you a perfect image. And uh, when you do that, it's always good for when it's an initial calibration, when it goes through all of that at least, is to do it with the lights on so it can clearly see. Then you turn the lights off and have fun. So you've seen what it looks like physically. You've seen what it comes with and you've listened to my incredible babble of a very long list of specs that this has to offer and some of the things that sets it apart from some of the other models and, and why it's ISA 3.0 and some other features are just so incredibly cool. So the next step, of course, is to see what it looks like on a screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this set up in one of our theaters and we're going to show you what it looks like. So let's go and do that. So we went ahead and installed this in our Demo 3 theater here, just a temporary install for now, uh, so we can really get an, an idea of what it's gonna look like. It is about, I'd say, 17 to 18 feet away from the screen. And this is a 150 inch screen, and we are going to kick on the projector by hitting the power button in the back since the remote's not gonna work yet until we pair it. So I'm gonna hit that button. Let me get the microphone close to it, so you can hear. It's really quiet. I mean, I mean, it's incredibly quiet. So that is another big perk going on right here. Right now, obviously, it's pointing upward. 
because it's just the way we put it onto the stand that's an adjustable stand so it should be able to eventually sort itself out once it gets into its calibration mode. Again, this is just the first time booting it up. Now it's gonna want me to, actually right now, it's trying to focus. And being, even though that half the image isn't even on the screen, it focused actually pretty good with its autofocus. Now it's asking me to hit the home button and the back button together to sync the remote. I'm gonna do that real quick. And the remote has been paired to the projector, so the remote is now working with this new projector. We're gonna select English, you can't see it, but it says English. I'm going to set up using my Android phone and we're gonna skip through this section real quick. So we skip past that uh, to save you a little bit of uh, torture from being able to watch the pairing process, but we just used the an, an Android phone to quickly pair it to the projector, which only took a few minutes, a few seconds really. Search across all your TV apps and not just the Google ones, and yes, you want to do that. Get personal results, uh, we'll just say no thanks for now. Get to them, get the most out of your Google Assistant, we'll say yes for now. And then we'll install, it wants to install some of the options here. It's going to walk you through some of the basics and how to talk to Google Assistant and everything. Again, this has Google Assistant built into it, so you can make use of that. And now it's going to teach you how to do focus. It's going to show you how to do it from the remote and, uh, and walk you through how it does it and auto correction as well. And of course, your overall field of play does have to fit the screen inside of it. So we are actually going to have to adjust this projector slightly so it's pointing down. It looks like it's gotten everything except object avoidance, which we have to enable ourselves. We'll do that, or we'll do that in just a second. You can also join XDME's community by subscribing from here. And we are going to enable some of these options. And we have manual keystone, optical zoom, control, image displacement, we'll go to optical zoom. You can play around with that quite easily. Now we're gonna turn on some of these features such as uh, where you have the option of auto keystone on startup, we're gonna avoid that for now. Uh, auto keystone on motion, which we've enabled, so that way if you move the projector, it'll re-keystone itself, so it'll give you a properly balanced rectangular image on the screen. We got auto obstacle avoidance, auto screen alignment, and wall color adaptation, which is gonna be for, you know, if you have this shooting at a wall with colored paint that isn't perfectly white. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna shake it some to try to trigger this. It's going to try to do its calibration now. And boom, just like that. That is how quickly it does it. it. Just does its focus there and it immediately captured the area within the borders of the projection screen. Again, 150 inch projection screen. We just blew the projection uh, uh, outside of the screen a little bit. So that way the screen was within the playing field of the light that's being projected from the projector. It's able to determine the exact space of the screen within that field and size the picture down to fit. And as you can see, it takes literally seconds to accomplish that. Now, we didn't have to install YouTube. Uh, I thought we were gonna have to, but we didn't because it came pre-installed in there along with Ted and some other features. Of course, YouTube doesn't support Dolby Vision. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some Dolby Vision demo files, and we're gonna see what it looks like playing them directly off of a USB drive. Now, we just inserted the USB drive. Everything's right here. It immediately sees the options that are on the the disc. We have Dolby Earth and a few other ones. We're gonna go with the world in 4K HDR. And the brightness is actually very good. This looks fantastic. Looks like this video is provided by Mystery Box. And uh, just to throw their name out there, since we are using the video, thankfully their name is actually on the screen, so you can see that. But what we're getting right now is a very crisp 4K 
HDR, Dolby Vision, image on the screen, of course the lights are on, so we're gonna go ahead and take the lights off so you can really get an idea. And, uh, at the same time, this is showing you how bright it can get with the lights on, which is fantastic. So again, let's go ahead and take those lights down. And the projector is going to automatically calibrate to the changing or the change of light in the room so that way it isn't blowing you out. So it's taking the brightness down a little bit while not disturbing really much what you're seeing. Like we really couldn't see the adjustment there. It was very minimal. But what we're getting on the screen here is again fantastic. Now we're going to take the volume down since we do not have the rights to that song. But uh, the music coming from that, I'll just tell you from personal experience, uh, from just hearing that, sitting here and hearing that myself, that sounded fantastic. The Harman Kardon speakers built into the projector sound amazing. The lens, you might have been wondering, where is the lens on this projector? It is located obviously on the front of the projector, but it's behind the cloth section. It's actually a door that slides down, revealing the lens behind it. So that's one thing that I didn't catch is that I didn't point out how the lens actually jumps out, which also adds to the modern appeal of the projector because you're not staring at a lens. Nobody's asking what this is. They just think, what is it? Or well, they're asking what it is, but they're not, they're not thinking it's a projector. They're just like, is this a Bluetooth speaker? What is this? And it is because you can play something out of it and take advantage of those Harman Kardon speakers by connecting your phone to this and just using it for music when you aren't using it for projection. Now, it is important to point out that you're probably not going to get to see the exact same quality as I'm seeing myself, since the camera's eye doesn't always perfectly convey that uh, for various reasons I won't get into, <laughs> but uh, it's very difficult to dial in a, comp a camera to, for low light conditions uh, to get the exact you know, image of what your eyes are seeing. But uh, if it doesn't end up looking as good as what I'm seeing right now in post, once everybody's done editing this, uh, you'll, you'll just have to lean towards my word more than anything else that this looks fantastic. It is super bright. It's crisp. It's detailed. It is just, it's in your face. It, there's just so much life to the image that's on the screen. And that is where really, I mean, like, just look at the, the, the detail in this engine. Uh, it's phenomenal for the price of $1,699. This actually lives up to some of the Epsons and other brands that we've come across that's within the two to $5,000 range. So $1,699 makes this a really good deal. And we really appreciate seeing something like this coming from XGME because not only is it a fantastic product, but it is reasonable. So the average consumer is going to have a little bit more of an easier time getting their hands on this than some of those other options. Now I'm just going to walk in front of this really quickly and you're going to see that it immediately detected me and it dimmed down uh, so it isn't shining a bright light in my face. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to walk across the screen and you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see that it immediately detected my presence and it avoided blowing my vision out with bright light saving me that uh, that harm to my eyes. And uh, it's, it's really something that's great for younger children or guests so that they're not surprised by the light that's shining at the screen. So there you have it. Uh, it sounds good. It looks good. Uh, it plays, it, you know, it supports Dolby Vision, HDR. It is a fantastic projector with a lot of features. Its ability to size itself to the screen is so amazing and so quick. So again, XGME Horizon Ultra. We definitely give this a thumbs up, but you'll find out more information in the full review once we've had more time with it, of course. And there you have it again, the XGME Horizon Ultra Android 11 4K Dolby Vision long throw smart home projector with a lot going for it for $1,699. We're gonna have links in the description so that you can find out where to buy this projector and anything else that comes to mind that we might find as important, such as a link to the full review once we've had more time to play with this so we can really dig deep into what we like or possibly don't like about the projector. That'll be hosted on plcnetwork.net and again, that link will be in the description. 
If you liked what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe and follow us and definitely click, click the like button so we know that you liked the video. And use the comment section below to chat uh, with us amongst each other as well as maybe even the manufacturer if they're watching. In case you have any questions, comments, maybe you have one of these, maybe you want one of these, definitely make use of the comment section and share those thoughts. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.